It's been indeed a pleasure to review the paper by Amraz Khan and his colleagues from the French A Hospital in Bristol, England. I've had a long association with Professor Khan by way of disclosure, and we've worked together in the Manchester British Association of Plastic Surgery teaching courses, and coincidentally, during the London bombing in 2005, the so-called Benton sisters, who were injured severely in the London bombing in the tube, were referred to me directly when I was at Duke University for 3B injuries to both feet that required lateral arm free flaps for limb salvage. The paper, Does Vascular Injury Affect the Outcome of Open Tibia Fractures? is a very good question to ask. This paper was a survey of United Kingdom orthopedic and plastic surgeons, and despite a response rate of a little over 20%, provided information that there's still confusion about the Castillo-Anderson classification of open fractures. More importantly, in 2012, with our armamentarium of perforator flaps, negative pressure dressing, propeller flaps, and the like, is the Castillo-Anderson classification that's over 30 years old the proper classification for mutilating extremity injuries. The authors basically looked at the frequency of vessels that were damaged with the anterior tibial artery being the most commonly injured vessel in their series and trying to answer the question of extremity vascularity is important. Certainly we know that the original description by Castillo and Anderson was a 3C injury indicates that an extremity needs revascularization for survival and a 3B injury, of course, with significant soft tissue and quote-unquote periosteal stripping defines the 3B, but the 3B itself doesn't say if there's a one-vessel leg, a two-vessel leg, or all three vessels are intact. We know that fracture healing and morbidity and venal lymphatic impairment is based on blood supply to the extremity. We therefore indeed can conclude, and it's been my observations, that the single-vessel leg often has issues with osteomyelitis, persistent infection, uh, difficulty healing bone, and other parameters that, result, that reflect a compromised inflow. It is indeed important after the initial trauma and stabilization in the 3B injury to ascertain for pre-op planning of free tissue transfer, vascular inflow arter on the arterial side and venous outflow on the venous side. Uh, the authors suggest a 3B plus classification that describes less than three vessels in the 3B fracture being opened. I think this is a good addition, but I think even a different classification that gives Theo Anderson should be considered, and I'll look to our colleagues in Britain to work with us here in the United States to perhaps come up with a better classification system using these parameters of vessels, soft tissue injury, and one that can continue to support the orthoplastic concept and their orthoplastic surgeon in England.